In the falling away in the end times, as we get closer and closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to see these fake Christian movements. They'll come in the name of Christ, but it's deceiving. They'll say they believe in Jesus, but they're going to point you to another God. I believe in the end times that the Hebrew Roots movement will be leading the way in trying to guide Christianity to take the mark of the beast. I believe the Seventh-day Adventists will be on board. I believe the Mormons will be right there with them. All the secret societies and the false religions will be working for the Antichrist. And that is a big accomplishment. And I believe that the Hebrew Roots Movement and Judaism and Zionism and Dispensationalism and Freemasonry are all going to be working together and they're going to use Scripture to deceive many. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He appeared like a lamb, like Christ, but he spake like the devil. He talked like Satan. And he, verse 12, exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and calls at the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So here we're dealing with a false prophet, a religious false prophet, who gets the world to worship this false antichrist, a fake political savior. And this political savior will probably either fake his death or fake a resurrection, and, and they get him to worship this guy through the power of the devil. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now that'll be amazing. You have a television in your pocket, you can see live events as they're happening. And everybody around the world will wonder after this beast and say, wow, did you see what just happened? Fire came down from heaven. This guy was shot and he was revived. He resurrected himself. And now the Pope or whoever it might be, the Billy Graham, whoever it might be, some great political leader, Christian leader, they're all going to work together and point toward devil worship. He says in verse 13, and to do with great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. They say, listen, this political leader, we need to make an idol to him. We need to make a statue and worship it. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This will be the first talking idol. Somehow it will be animated. This will be an idol that has the power to kill people that don't worship it and the devil and the Antichrist. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. Now here we go. The mark of the beast in their hand, in their forehead. Well, nobody would put up with that today. Everybody knows better than that, really. There are companies in America doing it right now. Embedding microchips in people. There are whole countries moving toward this. There are financial systems moving toward this exact purpose. It calls it all, right? Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Why? Verse 17 and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You won't be able to buy anything without this. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. That's where the 666 comes from. In the end of the world, God has already foretold what will happen, and people will worship the devil, and the Antichrist, and this false religious leader, and they're going to take a mark inside of their hand or inside of their head so they can do financial transactions. To receive this mark, they have to worship the devil and this false idol that will be able to speak, the image of the beast. And you say, well, this is a Christian country. How are they going to be able to deceive people to actually do this? Well, number one, I don't think we're any longer Christian as we once were. Right? I think there are many generations that are getting weaker and weaker, and they're turning the mark of the beast into something superstitious. Sure. Oh, you're just superstitious. Oh, you don't trust credit cards. You don't trust the International Bank of Settlements. You don't trust the Federal Reserve. You're superstitious. No, I'm just trying to be wise. What God has told us is true. This will happen. It has already happened in God's eyes, and we are seeing things play out right now. As we march toward the mark of the beast, 
how will the Hebrew Roots Movement and the Seventh-day Adventists and the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witness, how will they get on board with accepting a 666 and worshiping the devil? How in the world would a so-called false religious and messianic Christian put something in between their eyes? Look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 6. They're going to uphold the old commandments that were meant for a blessing, and they're going to ignore the New Testament of Jesus being God. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Do you understand that the Hebrew Roots Movement, the Seventh-day Adventists, they ignore the fact that Jesus is God and He has finished the works for salvation, and that faith alone saves. They say, He opened the door, and now you have to keep the Sabbath. Now you have to keep the laws. And they will point to this very verse and say, God already told us that we should put the law in our eyes or the law in our hands. I believe that the New Age Hebrew Roots Movement and the Satanic Seventh-day Adventists and uh, the Mormons that serve another God of Moloch and the Jehovah's Witnesses that do not serve Jehovah, I believe they will all get on board with the Antichrist when they see the miracles, when they see that, and they will say, hey, well, the Old Testament, the Bible said it. And they'll point to other scriptures as well. So listen, in the end times, and I believe they're upon us, we will see a great falling away. And people will point to the law for salvation. But according to the Bible, he says this was an allegory. Abraham had two sons. One was a promise. That's a picture of salvation through Christ. And we that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are of the free not of the bond. We are not in bondage to the law. 